this video, I'm going to show you how I made this rolling cart for my Shapeoko CNC. Stay tuned and you'll see how I did it. Before I get started, quick note, this design I actually got from watching uh, Ben Myers' video on a similar cart he made. He made his out of two by fours. I had a lot of scrap plywood, three quarter inch plywood laying around. So I decided to modify the design and uh, build it out of the, uh, the plywood. Uh, I think that's just as sturdy as the two by four and it was effectively free because it was scrap I had. But uh, I just wanted to give uh, uh, credit to Ben. He had the idea uh, and I just, from watching his video, put together my own design. So check out how I did it. If you're interested in how Ben did it, I'll put a link over to his video uh, over on his channel too. So stay tuned. So the first step is going to be to make the bottom shelf that is going to uh, go at the bottom. And surprising place for it. Uh, so it's a pretty simple thing actually. It's just 42 by 48. Uh, these are 40 and a half inches across and it's a single sheet of plywood and the coast the casters will go here on the corners and that's it you can see that i use pocket holes uh, for this i space them out about every six inches and so the next step i'm going to glue and screw those boards to the plywood but first i'm going to take my router and just round over these edges i think that'll be a little bit nicer I'll round the corners as well, and that way I won't scrape my knuckles as often whenever I'm uh, moving things in and out from the uh, storage area. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm ready to put the frame on the bottom shelf, the plywood for the bottom shelf. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue and screw it. I have pocket hole screws and I, uh, I'm going to start with one edge and work my way around the perimeter. I think that'll, uh, that'll work out best. I'll make sure that I don't have a jacked corner and my cross pieces are perfectly flush. I'll use clamps while I'm uh, holding it uh, to while I screw it and so that way everything will be held tight in place and then I can uh, just work my way around. So that's what I'm going to do now.
here's something that I should have done differently. If you look right here, sorry for the camera. Um, can you see that? There's about a sixteenth of an inch there, um, a sixteenth of an inch gap, because I didn't put this in place when I did the sides. And I should have done that. I should have used that to help me ensure the sides were in the right spot. Um, so what I was doing was lining it up my sides perfectly with the outside of the plywood and I must be a little off on the plywood. So that means I'm going to have a gap on one of these sides. Well, that's alright. I think it's going to be plenty strong enough. When I do my legs, I'm actually going to do a two-piece plywood um, so it'll be a V in here and it'll get held together at that point. So I'm, I'm not worried about the, the strength, the structure, uh, structural integrity, but... Okay, here we are about to do the casters. These are three inch uh, rubber casters with brake. Now I got all four with a brake because that's what was available at, Har at Harbor Freight today. The, this style um, without the brake was not uh, swivel and because my garage is a tight space, I wanted all four to swivel, and the this size without the brake was uh, only a few cents less than the. These three inch casters stick out nicely from the edge. So regardless of how the wheel is, like this or like that, um, I can easily get it with my size 12 to lock it. And then my big steel toe can get underneath there to unlock it. Now I'm ready to do the top. And it's going to be just like the base only I'm going to put a couple of extra supports in the middle just to help support the weight and distribute the weight of the Shapeoko CNC. Uh, that guy weighs uh, around uh, a little over 100 pounds, between 100 and 150. So I want to make sure that uh, we've got some good support there. So I'm just going to uh, repeat what I did on the base and uh, then I'll be ready for the legs.
the top is done. So that took, looking at my counter, about 18 and a half minutes, including the talking time, to assemble that, glue it up, screw it down. On to the legs. Okay, time for the legs. So I want the top of this cart to be 30 inches. And so my, my CNC will set on top of that. So to figure out what I need for length on the legs, I'm going to need to subtract from 30 the, the height of the coaster, yeah, coaster, the height of the caster and the plywood on the base from 30 inches. I'll also need to subtract the thickness of the MDF from 30 inches. So to make it easy, this is three quarter inch plywood, that's three quarter inch MDF, and so I'll, that's an inch and a half. So I will just measure from the floor to the bottom of my plywood, and that's three and a half. So three and a half, plus an inch and a half is five. So my legs will be 30 minus 20, my, I'm sorry, 30 minus five for 25 inch legs. Okay, I uh, said I wasn't gonna show the cutting because that's boring, uh, but I'm kind of proud of this setup. This is my miter saw station. I've got a lot of drawers and things uh, as part of this, and I've got a tape measure mounted to a T-track rail with a sliding stop so I can just quickly set up and make my cuts. And I have back here, I have it off so you can see, I have my dust collection is piped in to here. I normally have these panels mounted here. so that that creates some suction on the outside and pulling the dust in. So very little dust gets out of this area when these are in place. But for demonstration, I wanted to just show that. So here I am going to, I'll stack these up. We're making these at 25 inches of coal. Okay, let me mention the dust collector. It's a Harbor Freight uh, dust collector with um, a remote control I bought from Rockler. And I really like it because where I put my dust collector is kind of in the corner. So rather than having a physical switch, I got this uh, remote start, a uh, little wireless fob. If I want to hook it on my belt loop or something while I'm working on the other side of the shop, I can do that. But, you know, seriously, my shop's only uh, 20 by 20, and uh, I just walk over here most of the time and, and turn it on and, and uh, do that. So that, that works out really well. And so the legs. I've made eight cuts because I'm going to drill some pocket holes, screw these together, so I end up with a leg that looks like this. And so that'll give me some pretty good, pretty good strength. So now you see what I mean when I said that the base, I was going to have uh, the legs would be screwed in this way and this way in that corner where there's a gap. These are gonna help hold that together. And so I'm not worried about losing any, uh, any strength structural integrity so now I'm gonna set up and do the pocket hole okay this is my pocket hole set up it just clamps onto my bench when I built the bench I made sure I had an overhang here so I could clamp to it and basically it's a piece of plywood uh, this is half inch that runs the full length I sized it to fit my my work area here uh, when I built it, I forgot that I needed to extend out here 
for the clamp. So I added a piece. It's just a spacer, just something to give me some solid footing on the bench. And then this is a one inch thick to match the height of the, the Craig jig. This is a K4 and uh, you know, I, I kind of like it. I'm glad I spent a little bit extra, got the K4. Okay, so you notice I only drilled four of the legs, uh, four of the pieces. That's because of the way that they're going to be assembled, the, they're going to go like this. So this piece doesn't need any pocket holes because I'll be screwing into it. So on to the next step. use a little bit more glue than I did on the top and the base because uh, if you picture the legs and the, well, I need to roll it around uh, might have some side torsion might have a tendency to move this way a little bit rack on it so I'm going to glue it up a little bit more uh, better more better how's that and make sure that So on this piece, I'm just looking at it, see which side I want on the outside. I know it's a shop project, but it's cool if it can look, look decent at the same time. Ready for the legs and this time I've actually got everything I need over here already. So the legs are going to go in the corners like this. I'm going to use my inch and a quarter deck screws, exterior screws rather. Um, I'm going to put a little glue on these just to help hold them for some extra insurance.
much of that you're able to see as I was moving around, but um, that's the idea for the legs, and I'm really impressed with how stable they are. Um, so uh, I'm ready to put the top on, and depending on how it feels once I get it on there, I may not uh, screw it or glue it to the legs. We'll just have to see. I'm not sure it's going to be necessary between the, the weight of the top, which is pretty hefty, and the Shapoko sitting on top of that. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, and I don't see myself trying to lift it from the top. So we'll see. I think it's pretty sturdy. What do you think? Ready for the calendar? Okay, here it is. So I got a huge storage area down here. The whole thing measures 42 by 48. This is actually a side. Um, here's the front. I have the casters locked right now, so I can't move it very easily. But um, Pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, there's no racking. There's no movement. Uh, I've used this design for a workbench. I tell you, it's it's solid. Maybe do something different on the top, but as far as the legs and the frame, uh, pretty happy with it. So that's a wrap, folks. Next up is the Shapoko assembly. Thanks for watching.